the member for Wright. Thank you, Mr Deputy Chair. And uh, I also rise to speak on the Environment Protection and Biodiversity uh, cons Conservation Amendment, Independent Expert Scientific Committee on Coal Seam Gas and Large Coal Mining Development Bill 2012, currently debated before the House. <coughs> As you're well aware, the bill will, will formally establish an independent expert scientific committee on coal seam gas and large coal mining developments. The committee is a positive step forward in proving public confidence in the environmental integrity of the industry and the coalition will not stand in its way. The committee will provide scientific advice to government on relevant coal seam gas and large coal mining projects, as well as commissioning and funding water resources assessment for prospective regions. However, Mr Deputy Speaker, I ask you today, would you want your home or your land or your future uh, and that of your family invaded by, no, by a mining company with no regard for how this will impact on your livelihood. I absolutely um, also associate myself with the comments put forward earlier by the member of Groom in McFarlane calling for the, employment of, uh, for the employment of a committee member with industry specific and technical qualifications including geology, hydrology and, and, yeah, and, and hydrology. As the committee's Fundamental reason it is, is to provide advice on scientific issues relating to water associated with coal seam gas and coal mining. Affected landholders need greater certainty that appropriate re certainty and appropriate regulations will be put appropriate regulations will be put in place to provide them with confidence to believe that the industry is sustainable and reliable. On behalf of my constituents of right, I'm concerned about the environmental integrity of the coal seam gas industries who will be undertaken in these developments. I'll start by highlighting that while I'm not opposed to mining, in fact I support mining in the Surat Basin and I support mining in the Galilee Basin and I support mining in Western Australia, um, I'm making every attempt to bring my mind to the importance of greater economic commercialism between the landholders and the coal seam gas developers. As some of you may know, the coal seam gas is associated coal seam gas access via drill wells, uh, drill down and into the, in some cases along the coal seam gas uh, lines. Large quantities of underground water are removed to release the gas. The process is sometimes sped up using the controversial hydraulic frackering methods, uh, meaning that a mixture of sand, chemical and water is injected into under, underground at high pressure to shatter the coal seam um, and rock. My electorate of right comprises numbers and numerous agricultural industries, including horticulture, dairy, cattle and cereal crops uh, production and is often referred to as the food and fibre basin of Australia. The farmers affected by these coal seam gas developments care for the environment. They know the importance of protecting our future generation and furthermore, they want to protect it because it's in their blood. Well, but most concerned to the people of my electorate is the protection of the water table. We cannot afford to risk our water supply as it is vital to our livelihood and most importantly to the food and fibre production of our farms. Farmers are concerned that if water is contaminated by coal seam gas development, that they would have no way to prove contamination has occurred unless, unless immediate scientific research is undertaken. Failure by the coal seam gas and mining developers to engage with the community in which they are to operate has added to the increased level of concerns by landholders. The Queensland Water Commission last week released a draft underground water impact report. The report has found that 85 bores were, ex were expected to be affected by coal seam gas development within three years and 528 bores in the long term. These were amongst 21,000 private bores in the Surat Basin and Western Queensland and the report is one of the first independent assessments of coal seam gas activity. The, the delivery of reports such as this demonstrate the importance of the need of an independent scientific assessment in relation to coal seam gas developments because of the information they provide. Furthermore, employment of expert advice in hydrologists and geologists is paramount to the scientific understanding by the government and the landholders towards the long-term effect of coal seam gas and mining and coal mining developments. We need to further assure that the risks are too great. Uh, what are the other options available? Because our food basin is simply too valuable. We have, been assured by the, we have been assured that the committee will produce scientific knowledge that will provide greater certainty for regional communities surrounding the coal seam gas and large coal mining developments. I question the interpretation of the meaning uh, of certainty to whom will it deliver certainty? The constituents being affected by the coal seam gas mining and other large coal mining developments, 
the local landholder who has been invaded, or, the government, or is the government referring to the greater certainty of the coal seam gas companies who will be making millions at the behest of our growers and rural businesses who are primary targets for these developments? Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm talking about those Australian farmers who put food on our table, um, often with little or no thanks. According to the government, the establishment of this committee will provide local communities and other stakeholders with scientific information that will build confidence in government assessment process. I hold serious doubts about the government and its, uh, its, I hold serious doubts that the government is sincere in its commi commitment to provide accurate scientific information of how coal seam gas and large coal mining developments will impact upon affected regions. I'm sure that many of our constituents in right will be more than willing to highlight their concerns, not just for the sake of saying so, but because it affects them and their families directly. Mr Speaker, I also raise significant concerns in my constituents in re relation to the difficulties faced with land access and the lack of appropriate compensation. The rights of development companies over the rights of landholders is an ever-growing concern. When talking about coal seam mining and large coal mining developments, uh, I'm referring to land which is precious to our farmers in the Australian community who would rather not see the food supply destroyed. There will be obviously some landholders who may be willing to work and undertake, have work undertaken on their property and receive payment for that. Circumstances such as this are acceptable because they are on a cooperative and transparent basis. However, the integrity of our underground water must be paramount and upheld, uh, thus not affecting the, the neighbouring commercial farming practices. The affected communities need to be assured that the coal seam gas mining will not harm the environment and that the coexisting issues between landholder and the mining companies are open to transparency. If a mining company was to walk into your apartment on the 22nd floor um, and move into your third bedroom and start drilling, you'd be appalled. So I ask you, why is it acceptable for mining companies to have legal access to prospective development sites? As a final point, I draw your attention to the issue regarding landholders not receiving fair compensation. Uh, as I've been quoted before, protection of farmland is paramount to the region and is not interested in tapping into the economic benefits of coal seam gas mining. However, compens compensation means affected landholders can make accurate and informed decisions about their future and, furthermore, will also provide opportunities for the local communities where the money can be spent. Australia has some of the most beautiful, iconic farming land, and I make particular reference to the Cedar Right, and I believe that there seems to be an overall willingness from my electorate to protect that farming land. I also take the opportunity to welcome the State Government's election commitment to make sure that vital cropping land, such as the scenic rim as a shire, is protected and look forward to working with the committee to ensure that we shift away from accepting the unknowns and replacing them with knowns. Mr Deputy Speaker, I also take the opportunity just to inform the House that why is it that iconic farming land is, is targeted as, as, a, uh, as a place for exploration and drilling? Well, I suppose if we use the analogies from the mining companies or the gas exploration companies, it's, they're picking the low-lying the low fruit. If you, if you use two, two analogies that the just, just opposed position, if, they were to go in, if the mining companies were going into countries such as uh, uh, you know, west, of, west of my electorate, where it's heavily timbered, the cost of clearing that vegetation um, is, is, is an impact. Uh, the cost on machineries and fuel to get into these remote areas, um, the cost of, of clearing virgin scrub, um, notwithstanding the, the time delays that you would have imposed on you from state government and, and green tape, um, the cost of pushing in access roads and, and the cost of running power I would assume would be all part of the due diligence process. Iconic farming land on the other, on the other, um, at the other position is mostly flat with very easy access. Um, it normally has, uh, uh, normally has Bitchman Road access. Um, it is always cleared vegetation um, and it's always or mostly has close proximity to power to run electricity uh, from which electricity is sought for, for water irrigators. So when making the, the, uh, the argument about compensation, if, if the costs associated with, with extraction of coal seam gas in less favourable areas was amortised across the operation, uh, those compensation costs should be shared with the farmer. Uh, however, I do raise the point and stress the point that the protection of our water tables must be paramount. The integrity of the water tables must be kept. Mm. Um, 
if a compensation agreement is raised between a farmer and, uh, and, and a gas exploration company where fracking is, is undertaking, uh, it, is, it is unviable or, or, or is unwise for one farmer to, to exploit compensation payments uh, and have the, the integrity of the water table damaged uh, at, the, at the disadvantagement of, of a neighbouring farmer. Uh, though that type of circumstance would not have my support. Um, I support the amendment that the committee uh, the, I support the amendment that goes with the bill which speaks to um, a committee that has a relevant skill set with reference to hydrology and geology. Uh, and I, I, I also take the opportunity in closing that whilst I have in the scenic rim a, um, a very voiced community with reference to their position on um, the protection of the scenic rim. There are other sectors of my electorate, being uh, the, uh, the, um, the Lockyer Valley over at Gatton, who don't have that protection that was offered by the state government. Um, and this bill hopefully goes to protecting, or the amendments that we're putting forward goes to protecting the underground water table uh, for those businesses so that when making assessments as to whether or not coal seam gas uh, should or should not uh, uh, be invested in, in those areas, that we have accurate data, accurate data based on scientific, um, um, by, uh, offered up by scientific, um, that comes from a scientific background, so that the, the, the water table is monitored prior to the drilling and then monitored after the drilling and that any impacts on those are shared with the public, with the landholders um, and, is, and is held in an independent position as opposed to being, um, at the moment, I believe, under the auspices of the mining companies. Uh, I, I, I offer the bill for, for consideration. Thanks, Mr Speaker.